A string of bombings. Police say the attacks have happened security. in several cities, including Baghdad. Some of the inmates and the guards. Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. That's not what this program's about. As was indicated, uh, what uh, the intelligence community is doing is looking at phone numbers and durations of calls. They are not looking at people's names, and they're not looking at content. This is just metadata. There is no content involved. What is metadata? So according to the dictionary, metadata is a set of data that describes other data. So it's just not about the data we're collecting. It's about the data it describes. So when we're looking at this NSA phone program and they're saying that they're just collecting metadata, I mean, what really is that? So first of all, when you look at your phone number, that's your unique identifier. So they're collecting that. And they're collecting the location that you make a phone call from. They're collecting the phone number you're calling, the location you're calling, and the duration of the call. So some people might say, big deal, like what can you tell from that? I mean, obviously they're not listening to my phone call. Well, let's use me as an example. If you collected my data, what would you learn about me? So you look at my area code. You know it's a California area code, but I make most of my calls from a very specific spot in Michigan. And on a regular basis, I call a phone number from Ohio. Now that phone number from Ohio also is located in that very specific spot in Michigan. So you can safely assume that I either live with that person or I'm married with that person. You also know where my wife works because she leaves our location here and she makes phone calls all day long from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. at a different location. She also stops creating metadata on her phone at 10 p.m. at night, while I continue to create metadata on my phone until 2 a.m. So I go to bed four hours after she goes to bed. Like a lot of other people, I like to talk on the phone when I'm driving. So you can learn a lot about me by looking at my metadata. For example, at 9 a.m. every morning, I drive to Dunkin' Donuts. You can tell because I'm on the phone when I'm going there. At 5 p.m. every day, I go to the bank. 10 a.m. every Wednesday, I drive 40 miles to go see a doctor. You also know that doctor calls me the day before to confirm the appointment. And now that you have the doctor's phone number, you know what kind of doctor they are and what kind of medicine they practice. So we're being asked to believe, don't worry about it. This is just metadata. I mean, your name's not even attached to it. But let me ask you this, what's more intimate? Knowing my name or knowing where I bank? Knowing my name or knowing my personal medical history? knowing my name, or knowing what time my wife goes to bed. Now that they have this metadata, they can build an extremely detailed profile of an innocent American. And you know what's really scary? What they can do with that profile. What they can do is take your profile and put it into a computer system and monitor you to see if there's gonna be any deviations outside your pattern or for any risky behaviors. So essentially, this means you are under constant computer surveillance. Another thing to keep in mind is as your profile continues to grow and more and more metadata is added, combined with unlimited storage space and unlimited computing power, these computer models will eventually be able to predict your movement before you know what you're going to do next. Because after all, we're creatures of habit. So just because they're not monitoring the content of our phone conversation doesn't mean they're not violating our privacy. So with all due respect, Senator Feinstein and President Obama, it's not metadata, it's my data.